Good evening, good evening, everybody. Welcome once again to another fun and credit chat. This is amazing. This is our second in credit chat in, in two weeks. We haven't done this in, in quite a while, but it's exciting. It's fun. Um, so we're happy to be back doing this this stuff here tonight. We got another great guest with us. I see some people are already starting to pop on. So um if you have some questions ready, join the conversation. Um, but without further ado, we're gonna welcome our guest tonight. Um, she's a great actress, somebody who I grew up watching, and I'm sure a bunch of you saw growing up watching on television too. So please welcome to in credit chat this evening, actress Natanya Ross. Welcome, Natanya. Hey, thank you. Nice to see you. You know, I'm we we connected at and up in the Saratoga Comic Con in New we York did. a few uh yes. a few months. That was a while. Ago. How long November. ago? November. Right? Yeah, November. okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Wow. Time flies. Yeah, time flies when you're having fun. But that, that was that was a cool little convention there. And yeah. um it, it it was great getting the chance to meet you there. Um you, you know, too. and so I mean, you know, uh, Brian I, I Brian Wise not, he sent a bunch of hearts. Hi, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Is the so, director of the film I did, Wrath Mercy, and also one of my uh, very best friends. Oh, fantastic! So I, yeah, I definitely want to hear about Wrath Mercy. And someone did ask a question about that too. Oh. But I, I, I guess like every good story has a start. Um, I, 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 one of the questions that came in earlier um, was kind of tell us a little bit about your um, beginnings in showbiz. You're out in California now, but you you come from Asbury Park, New Jersey. I do. I know. I try not to talk about that too much. Uh -oh. I'm, just kidding. Uh -oh. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's a bad Jersey joke. Um, you need to be in some Kevin Smith movies. I mean, I'm available, Kevin. Kevin if you're watching. You're watching. Girl. Um, so, yeah, uh, from Asbury Park, but really, I, I grew up in Manhattan um, okay. doing theater and Broadway out there. And then we, yeah, we came out to California when I was about um, eight and a half, nine years old to film my first show, which you were so kind to bring me a headshot, like a you, have Billy, it. you have it. Well, I have it up on my bookshelf. That meant so much to me that you went out yeah. and made a copy of that for me. So yeah, the show Billy, that's what brought us out here. And um, yeah, the rest is history. Here we are. What, well, you, meant, you mentioned Broadway. I didn't, I didn't know you did Broadway. Yeah, well, briefly, I did two shows of Les Miserables, and then we got Billy. So it was kind of like, oh, wow. what do we do? Stay in New York, go to California, and, you know, TV, TV won out. And then I, I was Annie off-Broadway for many, many years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have the red hair. Yeah, <laughs> did, you have to, did you have to curl it, or? It was a wig. It was a wig. Oh, yeah. all right. wow. It was it with your natural red it's 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 an easier process that way got, got, got you got you Haley livingston says hi natanya hi Haley. Uh, hi so so let me let me ask you that question so you you were on broadway you went into television about how old were you when you got the acting bug was, was it something that you were excited about doing or your parents were like oh you know i've got a little one we've got a cute kid everybody thinks their kids are cute what kind of started that process for you yeah, definitely. My mom put me in very early. I started acting at six months old. I don't even know if you can say that you're acting at six months old. You're really just whatever the fuck you're doing, you know? Um, yeah, so I started really, really young. Um, and, you know, by the time I was cognizant of of that being my life, it, I, I guess I was like some sort of a seasoned professional at that by that point, you know? So um, I don't know if I like caught the actual acting bug until probably I was like 13 years old. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and I mean, as, 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 a, as, a, as a child, I don't, let me just, before we even get to television, because I know that's a whole different animal. What was it like doing like the Broadway and off-Broadway thing? Because yeah. those, are, those are sometimes late nights. So what, Very, what Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. Very late nights, but it's exciting. It's, you know, being a little kid running around Manhattan with your guardian parent, whoever's watching you. Um, and just you know doing show after show night after night matinee after matinee i mean it's it's it was very exciting you know it was it was very exciting so yeah i guess actually at that age i mean i already knew i loved it um and i felt i i already knew like i felt like i had what it took to be successful mm -hmm. so by the time we got out to california um yeah the 
at that point, there was no, even at that age, like plan B for me, that it, that's what it was going to be. I was going to be an entertainer my whole life. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so, and obviously again, different, different kinds of processes. You're on Broadway. Um, the show, Billy, I know you and I talked about it. a lot of people probably don't remember Billy, but everybody loves Billy Conley, you know, True. a great, yeah. a great comedian. Yeah. Um, so he, he was, so just for anybody who doesn't know what Billy is, there was a show on ABC called head of the class. It was about teacher. It was about a teacher and his kids gifted and talented kids. Um, Howard Hessman was the original teacher. I guess after th three or four seasons, Howard Hessman left the show. Billy Conley came and took over. The kids graduated. They loved Billy Conley and they loved the character. So they decided to do a spinoff show where Billy continued teaching at a university. You were one of the kids. Um, what was, what do you remember what the audition was for that? I've obviously they did auditions on both coasts. I'm yeah. Sure. Um, I do actually, cause we were in Manhattan. So we had flown out for pilot season and I went really far specifically for Billy. And then my manager said we needed to fly back out for the screen test. And we came out and it was actually between me and Brittany Murphy. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. And that's when I met Brittany for the first time who ended up becoming like a big sister to me later on. Um, and it was just kind of like a grueling day of like, in and out, in and out, in and out of the room with all the executives. And um, then they released us to go. And I went back to the hotel that they had put us up in for, you know, to be out there for the, the test. And um, the next day they called at around one o'clock or something and um, told us that I had gotten the part. And then they moved us. They relocated us out to California at that point. So we lived in the Oakwood apartments for a while. And then once the show got picked up, um, we had moved to a different place in Burbank. So, yeah. And now with that, with that process. So the, the other, the other young lady was Claire Bryant. Uh huh. Why? Well, I, I know she went on to, she was like, she was one of the slayers on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. That's the last time I remember seeing her. Was she? I don't remember that. La the last season she was, and I, as a Billy fan, I loved Buffy and I, I watched, I saw her. And I was like, I remember her when she was. Wow. A I didn't know. Yeah. Um, I didn't realize that. That's crazy. That's very then, cool. It was like the very she was one at the end when the show ended, and then of course Johnny Galicki, whose ca uh, career went nowhere after Billy. I mean, geez, poor guy, you know. <laughs> so what? So two the two questions for that is, um, so you had the other two kids at that point. Did they test you guys all together? When did they no, bring you guys? Actually, first? No, really? there was no chemistry reading. Yeah, it was just, um, uh, yeah, we never. I never tested with Clara and Johnny or <laughs> even Billy. Yeah, it was just uh, me and oh, Brittany. So didn't and, them either. Wow. Yeah, just me and Brittany. And there was one other girl, I can't remember who it was, just in and out, in and out, in and out of that room all day long, reading, 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 reading. And um, yeah, by the next day, the rest was history. Wow. And then, so you got there and they just, they brought you right on the set. Did your line, and that's where you met everybody for the first time, essentially. Then, um, no, I got the role. We we had time. We went back to uh, Jersey, okay. and then they flew us out um, to do the pilot. It was a two week process, actually. Um, it's it's a little bit longer than when you're actually filming the series. So we were at the Oakwoods for a couple weeks, and then my mom and I just ended up staying there a couple more weeks. We flew back to Manhattan. I went back to school at that point. At That's what I was going to ask you. What was the school situation? Yeah, I was in professional children's school, which is a really famous school for young actors in Manhattan. And we didn't know what was going to happen. And we ended up being a mid-season replacement, which means we initially did not get picked up to go to series. And yeah. then something else got canceled mid-season. They're like, all right, I guess we'll do Billy. So we got the call and that's when we got moved out to California. I got you. And I mean, they're only about 13 episodes. So overall, how long were you out in Cali? I mean, and you go back to the fourth. How long were you guys doing the show? Because obviously they didn't get picked 13 up. Weeks. It. 13 weeks. That's it. 13 weeks. That's it. It goes uh, It goes uh, an episode a week when you, do, when you do live audience. Yeah. That's right. And and I guess for you, that was good too, because you had some experience with the live audience from the theater. Yeah, I did. I did. So I was lucky in that way. Gotcha. Gotcha. So I remember you shared the story. So Billy could have been picked up, but Billy had a little crass mouth. <laughs> he did, yeah. So like midway through our first season, he went on a press tour and 
you know, he's just a very controversial figure. And I think he pissed off the wrong person. And, you know, we didn't end up getting picked up for season two. So, and that's Hollywood for you. <laughs> but, but for you, that was, that was the end of Billy, but the mm -hmm. beginning of a lot of other things. Then. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So you went, some, you went on to some other things as well. So you did like a lot of episodes, like, you know, on a lot of the other shows of the time, you know, Boy Meets World, Step by Step, stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I guess outside of that, what were you doing? At, you were out, you were staying out in California. Or you were still going. You were bi-coastal at that point. Yeah, no. At that point, we had moved out to California fully. I was living in a place called Park Point in Burbank, and uh, doing homeschool. And then, I mean, I was working. I I kept started working and never stopped working. So um, we were doing films and, like you said, episodics, and um, and then uh, and then came Alex Mack, and that really solidified us staying in California forever. <laughs> so. Gotcha. Now let's talk a little bit about Alex Mack. Um, so you, you, um, what was, was the process different in getting into um, like that role or um, pretty much the same kind of thing? Did they do the, the chemistry tests with the other actors in there or just. No, um, it was, you know, another, uh, I actually, I started auditioning for Alex Mack when I was 10 Okay. Um, they had filmed an original pilot and pretty much recast everybody. I was uh, screen testing for Alex, for Annie, for, um, and then they cast it, recast the pilot, brought me back for Alex and Annie, and then called my agent and said, we wrote a part just for her. We love her so much. It's a three episode arc. And, um, I went down there and of course there was like 50 other girls mm. that I had to read again. So, you know, um, but obviously ended up getting that role of Robin. And at the end of the third episode, um, you know, they had offered me a series regular contract. So. Gotcha. And then we turned, we turned three into a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that show lasted what about, um, about what, three or four years, roughly. Right. Well, How many four episodes? Years, but we did double, um, we did double episodes a season. So whereas most, sitcom or shows film anywhere from 10 to 13 a season we were doing 28 gotcha so four years is really more like eight years just condensed gotcha gotcha yeah. and, and at that point you're, you're now a teenager right um so yes and no i started when i was 11 and 11. ended when i was like almost 17 so yeah i mean preteen for sure so, yeah and and this is going to go with one of the questions that came in about being uh, first time you remember being recognized in public. Mm. And I mean, Alex Mack was a huge show. Yeah. What was it essentially like going, going yeah. through your teenage years on television? I was just telling my boyfriend actually, cause we were in Burbank the other day and right around this movie theater that we used to go to, like when we were kids, not me and him, but that all, me and all my friends used to go to when we were kids, it was like the cool thing to do on a Friday night to get dropped off at the movie theater. And, walk around downtown Burbank. And I don't, I don't know if I remember like the first time I got recognized, but I certainly remember the first time I realized I couldn't go out like that anymore. Mm -hmm. that it was just getting like more and more hectic and we were getting mobbed more and more. And I didn't really want to put my friends through that. And, you know, so <laughs> probably around, thir probably around 13, 13. Yeah. 13 or 14. Gotcha. And then you mentioned your friends. So, um, were a lot of were your friends were a lot of your friends in the business or did you have friends that were no they were all in the all in the business so so essentially they were all having the same issues as you for the some most. of the, some of them yeah i mean there were different groups like if specific people i went out with if it was all of us together it was just you had to stay at someone's house you couldn't really go out other friends you know that weren't working as much or something it was okay it was a little bit easier but yeah i mean <laughs> everybody at that time in my friend group, everybody was really successful and, and working and also working really hard. So I think we were all kind of shocked by it when it first started happening too. <laughs> like, this is so weird. We can't go out and do normal things anymore. Well, and, and you know, I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned it. I work with young people during my day job. I work in a school and I think that's what a lot of, and I mean, especially now in our day and age, everybody is, you know, wants to be an influencer, Facebook fam famous, as they say, right? Or I YouTube know. famous. Yes, TikTok famous. Yeah, right. Exactly. And I think there's a lot of young people 
who don't see they they see the I guess what they want to call the glamorous side of it, but don't understand what you're saying here is that other side of it. Yes. Where you're, you're not really you're limited. limited. <laughs> Sorry, hold on one second. <laughs> okay. I have to have those words on my dog. Sorry, so. sorry, you guys. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, but they don't they don't get to see they, they don't and maybe that's one of the things too, is that they don't get to experience what it is to be a kid, to be a teenager. Because right. yeah. you're you're in that spotlight. And I mean, certainly when when you and I were growing up, these things that are around now were not around now. Exactly. So yeah, whole different whole different world for sure. Is your dog's name Bill? My dog's name is Bill. Because Brian just yelled Bill. <laughs> Brian knows, yeah. <coughs> Funny. Definitely uh, Bill. Whenever you need uh, to ensure for Bill to not do something naughty, he's going to do the exact opposite. So <laughs> I have two little dogs myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll bark, no bite. Exactly. Um, I apologize. I'm coughing. I'm just dealing with oh, some allergies. No worries. No worries. Um, but yeah, so young people don't know that. So obviously... You're you're on a big show like Alan, Alex Mack. You didn't have to worry about like TMZ or anybody flagging you down. But no TMZ, yeah. Back <laughs> thank then, goodness, thank goodness, right? But the, yeah. but that's the thing is, growing up and again, at times are different, but still the same. You you are limited. And what I was going to yeah. ask you is for 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 young people who do want to get into the business, and again, the times are a lot different now. Right. Um, I think it's important, and, and that's why I ask you, um, what advice would you give? Somebody, you know, 10 years old, 15 years old, you know, 17 years old, what's some advice that you would give them to think about before jumping into showbiz at a young age? Uh, be very careful who you surround yourself with. Yeah. Very, impo very important words. Very careful who you surround yourself with. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's like hard to say that like a 10 or a 15 year old, like, you know, you should really know who you are as a person so you can mm -hmm. feel really secure in whatever the industry throws at you. I mean, I'm 42. I'm just learning who I am as a person, you know? So it's, it's hard to know what advice to give to young kids that want, <laughs> that want to act. Yeah. But for me, um, you know, I think the most important thing was like, just be careful who you surround yourself with, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and that, and that goes, that goes really with anything too, you know, just sure. your, yeah, your, right. your friends to find who you are. Yes, very much so. You know, and yeah. then again, of course, also the adults in your life too, as we know. Yeah. Yeah. So that's an important thing. And, you know, you, you mentioned about being, being secure with yourself as an individual. Yeah. Um, Cause let me ask you this. Like you said, you said all oh, you, you and your friends were into business. I'm sure I mean, and listen, as adults, we feel this too, right? But especially at the, at the vulnerable young ages, um, you're getting picked up for a show or you're doing a movie or, you know, your friend got picked up for your show. And it's, I'm sure some of it's like, well, why don't I have a hit show? You know, mm -hmm. so what, what was that? What was that like in, in like a circle of friends? Like when one person got something, it's like, well, I haven't got anything yet. So I can imagine that's tough for a kid. Yeah. You know, I don't, to be honest, I don't really remember that all of us were working so much and doing so many different things that didn't really conflict with another. I mean, I was obviously, I was obviously very typecast when I was younger, yeah. you know, so like my friends weren't really my competitors. They, um, it was a whole different thing. So I don't really, I don't really remember mm -hmm. that in our friend group. I mean, if I could be wrong, if I am, you know, I, maybe I should ask some of my friends from back then, but yeah, I don't really, remember, I don't, I don't really remember that at all. No, right, because yeah. I just, I, yeah, it's working it's in not like a very juicy answer, but <laughs> it's, that's just the truth. Well, I, again, I just think about teenagers and, you know, whether it be the school play or like the athlete, you know, like why, why wasn't I picked for this part? You know? Totally. Yeah. I think, I don't know. Maybe I just lucked out. I had a good group of friends at that age. Right. Um, yeah. Things were also different in the nineties. It wasn't as like uh, competitive and who has more followers and this, it was a very different time, you know? So I think that naturally that maybe um, created a, a space to be more supportive with your friends. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what the difference was, but I didn't have that in my group of friends. 
Yeah, no, and I, I, I can understand what you're saying too. Again, different, yeah. different times. You know, every everybody is competing for those likes and followers now. I and know it's crazy. <laughs> even as adults, right? It's crazy. Uh, you gotta just tune it out, or it'll drive you nuts. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So then, um, so Al Alex Mack ended. Um, where did you go after Alex Mack? Where did I go after Alex Mack? That's a good question. Um, I did a lot. TV. What? No, you did some more episodic TV. We talked about Boston Public, another show I loved. Yes, I did that later on. Yeah, I did a lot of episodics. I did a few episodes of Baywatch. I did 90210. I did um, a couple shows I can't remember the names of because nothing happened with them. I did Over the Top with Tim Curry. I did mm -hmm. a few films. I did Belly Fruit. I did Boston Public. Um, and I know I'm missing some stuff, but yeah, I mean, I kept working till I was about 21. Gotcha. Um, yeah, throughout, throughout, throughout your career as, as, as a young actress, who were some of your biggest influences? Oh, wow. Well, I loved Claire Danes. That was my idol growing up. Um, but I, I always felt like I was more heavily influenced by, um, uh, musicians i don't know that that's kind of the art that i was called to more not that i have any sort of musical talent at all i do not but um you know i when a lot of other kids were watching nickelodeon and disney and all of this stuff i was you know just first discovering nirvana and i'm wearing a whole shirt right now i just realized the irony and all that and hole and silver pear and pearl jam and smashing pumpkins and even some older music too the beatles the doors all of that stuff so um you know i didn't get into television and film until a little bit later probably right like yeah a little bit later and I, brian is probably still watching but um and then i became obsessed with david lynch okay. um and he's a director and inc absolutely incredible. And he did like Lost Highway, Mulholland Drive, Blue Velvet, Elephant Made Me, it goes on and on. And I remember when I was like 18 years old, I used to make my friends watch the films with me and they could not leave my house until they did an essay on the film. You and how I, they did the homework right then and there. Oh, yes. <laughs> I wanted to know how the film made them feel. I wanted to know everything from like what they thought about like shot by shot to like even the color grading and the, the musical score and the acting performances. So then I really became obsessed with film and started, you know, really delving into other directors. And um, I've always been on the darker and artsier side of things for sure. But as far as like actors that were idols of mine growing up, Claire Danes was really, she was kind of like the end all be all for me. I can't really remember idolizing any other actors. It was really more of like the filmmakers and musicians and um, even authors and artists. And so, yeah. Well, so like, so, and I, I mean, obviously you mentioned Claire Danes and you said art, art, uh, authors and artists. What artists in particular? I'm curious now too, because. Well, I've been obsessed with Mark Ryden since I was like a, a small, like a much younger lady than I am now. I'm not going to date myself too much. I loved Warhol since like the first painting of his I ever saw. I was just really obsessed with art. My mom actually started taking me to art museums when I was very young. So I knew already knew a lot about Van Gogh and Matisse and like all of these um, different artists. Um, but Romeo and Juliet was my favorite movie in my teenage years. And I ran that fucking tape over and over and over and over and over and over and over until I burned it to the ground. I definitely had favorite movies for sure. Um, but like as far as favorite actresses, that's always been a tough one one for me. Um, I don't, yeah. And, I can tell and, you and, like my favorite musical artists that I'm obsessed with and idolize, but yeah. Well, who, who, who do you who are you obsessed with and idolize? I'll then? give you, I'll just give you I'll give you, you said your honor. I'll give you four. Okay. Stevie Nicks. I'm like okay. looking at my walls just because they're all over the place. Stevie Nicks, Prince. That's my end all be all number one. No one will ever come close to that. Jim Morrison, Eddie oh, Vedder, fun. Kurt Cobain. All these classic Lee, guys. Billy Corgan. I mean, yeah, I, I can. You want me to keep going? <laughs> <laughs> you can. But, but no, I mean, I, you know, the the '90s were was such a, a sweet spot. I th I think there there is such a the, the music of the 90s and i mean and, and some of these yeah. other people 
went past the nineties, but even like you're talking about the movies, like, you know, mentioning Claire Danes, like you don't hear about her anymore, but just thinking okay. about like, which is a shame because she's still a brilliant actress. She, you know, yeah. Homeland, um, which has yeah. been on right. where I don't think it's on anymore. I mean, she was incredible in that. And yeah, um, there's not there. I, I really think, and it's not just because I feel like I didn't carve out my little imprint in it. There's just nothing like the nineties. I, there's a right. chunk of me that never left. Um, and you know, most of what I still, the things I still love, 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 love are all kind of like nineties related. So yeah. yeah. Bill, stop it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. But, 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 even even mentioning it though too is you know like the not like and you you said you carved a little niche into that but um yeah like that you you were in television and that was like the real sweet spot of TV at that point in time whether whether it be yeah. you know the Nickelodeon stuff the Disney Channel right. stuff the TGIF the NBC yeah. Saturday mornings like say by the like yeah there, there was a lot for young people there there was a I, lot for young people and a lot of really good programming for young people. Yeah. And obviously Nickelodeon, I mean, is a, is a network geared towards ch children, you know? And um, so, yeah, there was a lot going on in the 90s for sure, 100%. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, and I just want to point, pull out for everybody here. I did find it. There you are. Oh, my God. There, there that? you are. <laughs> Look at that little really nugget, girl. <laughs> <laughs> There she is. So funny. <laughs> yeah, wow. I love. Thank you. Thank you for making me a copy of that. I'll treasure it forever. I have it up on my bookshelf. So my pleasure, my pleasure. Yeah, I know. I appreciate that, that too. So, um, yeah. so, so, um, after your teenage years, right? Mm -hmm. you, you went on, did some other episodic TVs, TV programs, and and uh, some films and whatnot. Um, kind of, where are you now? What's going on now? I, uh, we got we, we mentioned Wrath of Mercy. Yes. Uh, Ra Ra Wrath of Mercy. Wrath so, Mercy yeah. that. so what 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 are we doing now? What's going on? Um well, I you know, I uh, after I stopped acting, it took I I took about a 10 year um turn with, you know, struggling with addiction, which I've been very open about. My story is mm -hmm. pretty out there. Um and then most of my 30s all of my 30s really was about learning to be in recovery and mm -hmm. what that looked like for me um so it really wasn't until um well to be perfectly honest it really wasn't until brian who we've seen puff on here my beloved brian came to me with the offer to play the lead role in his film that you know of course i i, I ping pong back and forth all the time should i act should i not act it's like a dark night of the soul existential crisis all the time. Um, so it wasn't until that, that I really made the decision like, okay, I'm just gonna, um, I'm gonna really give this my all. And I just recently yeah. in the last few months signed with a manager again, a complete management group. Um, so that's exciting. But uh, for the last like 15 years, I've been working in treatment. So I've been helping people that are struggling with drug and alcohol addiction get into treatment. And through that work, I've found a passion and love for working in the nonprofit uh, charity side of things, too. So mm. um, I've done the best I can to be an advocate in the last 10 years for a lot of different charities. But really where I landed the strongest was in the homeless community. So right. I've dedicated a lot of the last 10 years to um, doing what I can, where I can, how I can to helping um, the homeless community of Los Angeles, which is... Um, overwhelming and then alongside that like i said you know helping people get into treatment Man. so that's where i've been but i'm back now <laughs> no, been... no, I, I, I think that's powerful and I, I mean anybody that follows you and i put your instagram here on the bottom too um the one i i i noticed this too just looking at your instagram page the one person who we heard a lot about in the news who i see that you're friends with is sean weiss my roommate actually now my is roommate. he really yeah yep i mean i mean and i mean what what a what a what a great story you know and, and seeing that he's yeah. out there and i'm i'm gonna go and i i don't know the full story i mean i know what, what we know but i'm gonna from what you're telling me and seeing your pictures i'm gonna bet you helped him with that 
I'm sure I, I'm I'm gonna guess you probably were a good support. <laughs> I did. I, yeah, um, I did. But the interesting thing is, and you know, and Sean and I, um, we we're lucky. We've gotten to do a lot of really cool things together. Yeah. We travel. Um, I mean, we've even gone to Canada together to do autograph signings and, um, yeah. we did Adam Carolla together, you know, and yeah. our, our, our personal story together of me stepping in to help and him, you know, just our story together has been also public, which has, is interesting. You know, it's like, you know, not a lot of friendships are on a public level like that where TMZ's report. I mean, it's crazy. It's just the weirdest fucking life sometimes, but, um, yeah. And, and, uh, actually I know I said, I wasn't going to talk about this. I'm going to just, this is all I'm going to say about it. I went through a pretty bad divorce this last year and about six months ago, Sean came to live with me to take care of me, to make sure I wasn't alone and I was okay. It was really a, a, a 180 moment. Um, and to be honest, I don't know if there's anybody else who could have done it in the way that he did it with me, you know, with, um, he's so funny. He's so talented um, I don't know if a lot of people know this about him. If you don't, you've and there's a show nearby you and you see him post about it, you should go check it out. He's an incredibly gifted comedian. Um, and um, so, yeah, so he came and, you know, four years later, repaid the favor, really, in a pretty significant way. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, grateful to have him living with me right now, for sure. No, I, I mean, and that's, you know, I and guess he introduced me to my current boyfriend. So he really, you know, he's he's good in my book. <laughs> the gift that keeps giving. It's great. The, the gift that keeps giving. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 that that's that's the positive thing. And I think, you know, we you hear about the you know, the prices of fame, you know, and like we were talking yeah. about being young. And being in showbiz, and I mean, and being an adult and being in showbiz, you know, and it taking away from from regular life because because you are you are in the spotlight, you are in the public eye. But mm -hmm. then, I guess, as an actress and being in the public eye and having these connections, the fact that I'm sure that helps you with what you do in giving back to the community. It it has helped, yeah. So I'm lucky in that way, and that's never lost on me. Mm -hmm. Do you find yourself working um, in in this in the recovery area? Um, like you said, the homeless population. Are you working with a lot of kids? Are you looking working with more adults? It varies. Um, it's there's it hasn't been a lot of kids. You know, during COVID, we hit it really hard. My friend Marty, who's in the Sandlot, he helped me a lot, mm -hmm. and Aaron Schwartz, um, all these guys, all my actor friends, they really like came together and helped support me and Sean big time and we got a lot of people off the street and into the shelter of tiny homes um yeah. so that's kind of been a lot of where my focus is and then more recently i got asked to help build out a foundation um it's called the family recovery foundation i post about it on my instagram so you can find links and all of that stuff there and um you know basically this year i was like what do i want to focus on and we're staring at this crazy crazy fentanyl epidemic that yeah. just doesn't seem like there's a way to make a dent in it at all. And um, I don't think anybody's naive enough to think that, you know, we can eradicate it completely. However, um, what I was really called to this year is I'm, as I'm watching my cousins who range from 12 to 15, and mm -hmm. I know that, you know, these are the ages where all of this stuff starts. And I really wanted to create um, a support platform group for one kid, one arm, you know, kids that are dealing with that in schools. Mm -hmm. And then also if, if these kids have a parent or a loved one in treatment, like yeah. their mom or dad is in rehab and, and they need a safe space. Um, so that's the foundation that I'm helping build out this year. And um, alongside with that, we're offering support groups for any loved one of an addict that's struggling or suffering with addiction. So, Yeah. yeah. I mean, you mentioned kids. Like I said, I work in a school. It, mm -hmm. it is scary. You don't know what's I know. in I, I have an 11 year old too. And I tell him, do not take anything. And nothing. Anybody. Because yeah. You know, it was like, I, I don't know if in, you're in LA and New York a few months ago here, there was like a daycare where a kid like breathed it in and the baby died, you oh know? And, it's, and even at my school, you know, um, we're just very mindful of things too, because you don't know whatever substances and this is what we're telling kids like 
people are ingesting things into their body you do not know what it is you and the scary thing with fentanyl is all it takes is one time and that's it that's right that's right so obviously i see a lot of that bringing people into treatment and um yeah. it's it's scary it's very scary i'm grateful to not be in that world anymore um in this day and age i don't know that yeah. i would have survived it really so um I, i'm just trying to do whatever i can to give back um, I really believe that the more I think about you, the less I think about me. I try and live my life that way. Yeah. When I do, my life tends to, um, I tend to have more serenity and gratitude as opposed to what, where we can all get caught up, which is just that like thinking of self, thinking of self, like, what do I need? What, what am I going to get? What do I have to do? And, um, so the more I think about you, the less I think about me and to just lead with a heart of service, I think is just. Um, something that's really important for all of us to try and incorporate where and when we can. And my heart gets called to certain things. And this year it's, it's uh, preteens and teenagers. And it's mainly because of how close I am with my little cousin. So, yeah. No, they're, they're the future. I mean. And they're the future. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. We, we, we see how fast our time has flown by, right? And just. No, I'm old I can't believe it. Yeah, I'm like a dinosaur now. So <laughs> learning all this, all the kids and all the computer stuff, we don't. <laughs> literally, quite literally, yes. <laughs> so you're also doing a bunch of appearances, different places. Yeah, yeah. So what what's that like going back out there now? And um, how long have you been doing conventions or appearances for? When you've been um, here? For about four years now. Yeah, I was. Okay. I, I was newer to this world. It's a wacky world out there. Um, but it's been really cool to be able to get out there and meet the fans. Um, you know, because of streaming and this resurgence of the nineties, a lot of this stuff feels to people like it was just, you know, brand new, almost like, almost like yeah. they just watched babysitters club for the first time, or they just watched Alex Mack for the first time or whatever it is, which is really special. And, um, you know, I get a lot of, because my character on Alex Mack was so goth and emo and alternative, yeah. I get a lot of people that, that tell me, you know, what a different high school experience they had, just knowing that there was representation of kids, kids that felt like that mm -hmm. on television, let alone on Nickelodeon. So that part's been really, really special for me. I always meet somebody at one of these shows, like on the actor side of it, that ends up becoming a dear friend. And, mm -hmm. um, there's just been no downside to it at all. It's, it's, it's all been really, really special to get back out there. It's a little bit of a trip. I'll leave LA and go to a different state for four days where, you know, seemingly it's like you're famous again. And then, and then you get back to LA and no one gives a fuck about you. Yeah. Everyone's like, who cares? So um, that part of it is interesting to like go back into yeah. time like that. Um, but I get to do a, a lot of them with my friends um, Sean and I, we're going to Wyoming next weekend nice. to do one, um, with our friend, Aaron Schwartz, you know, it's just, it's, it's, yeah, I, I've been really lucky. I get to do a lot of these with my friends. So that part is really cool. And reconnecting with everybody. And I, again, you mentioned it, you're seeing what there's this resurgent, you, you know, you were doing this work in the nineties. You had no clue outside of when you're around people, what the influence you has and that, and that you influence you had. And now you're meeting these people who watched you yeah. and you're like, Oh crap. You, you like yeah. my work. <laughs> it's overwhelming. Yeah, for sure. You know, to, to be someone's favorite actress growing up when they were a child is an honor really, yeah. you know, or to be the reason why someone felt comfortable in high school is an honor. Yeah. Um, and it's never lost on me, never lost. And there are shows I show up to do where there's only like, three people there to see me like, you know, <laughs> where there's only three people there to see me and, and it, or there's 30 or there's a hundred or whatever it yeah. might look like, or 300. And, um, it all means the same to me. It all absolutely means as much as the other. And, um, yeah, I, I know how lucky I am that I get to do that. That's a very cool thing to be able to still do for sure. It's the gift that you get, the gift that you get to still bring to people then too. Yeah. It feels like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause then yeah. you mentioned like, you know, you played this character that was different from the others, the goth girl, you know, and like you said, some there, I'm, and I'm sure you've had this experience. You've been to a show and somebody said, you know, I didn't have friends in school. You were like me. I came home right. and I watched it today. That's right. 
That's right. So yeah, it that, means that's a lot. The power. That, that's the, that that's the power of the medium of television, movies, and all it that is. stuff is, is making the that power, connection. The power of celebrity. Yeah, absolutely, hundred yeah. percent. So now let me ask you. Um, so you, Alex Mack, I, I probably have all your shows. That's probably the only one that would this question be relevant to. Are you still in contact with the cast and? Yeah. Has there ever been any kind of conversation? Like maybe we should, you know, because everything is a reboot or a sequel. Oh, we've, yes, yes. We've been <laughs> down this road um, for a couple of years. We were definitely in talks for a reboot. It's just, you know, it kept getting blocked at like almost every turn. And um, I am still friends with the majority of the cast. I just spoke with Larissa a couple of weeks ago. Um, I Jason Strickland, Darius. Um, Jason and I are set to do a, a signing together in October. Um, yeah, I'm still front and I still speak with the creator of the show, Tommy Lynch all the time as well. So, you know, uh, in that sense, I'm very lucky. These are 30 year old relationships. Yeah. yeah. Nice. And then like you yeah. said, people are discovering it on streaming. So you all, all it takes is like Paramount plus to be like, you know, we're doing a new Alex Mac. That's right. Get them all yeah. back on. Hopefully, on hopefully they bring us back for it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, you guys would have, you would have the new kids, the new generation. Yeah. We would be everyone's parents. Now. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I would be someone's mom. So, you there know, you it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be good though. It'd be great. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned a couple of shows, anything else that you want to um, share with people where, where they can find you? Um, what you're doing? Yeah. Um, my Instagram is kind of the best way to keep up with me and, um, follow along for the signings and the appearances that I do. We talked about wrath mercy. Yeah. Um, you know, go, you can go follow that Instagram page as well. It's just wrath mercy. Um, exactly spelled as it sounds. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm about to start auditioning again, so we'll see what happens. You know, um, I could be popping up on your TV screen again, yeah. if, if, it's, I if it's God's will. And I, and I put the link to Brian's website where there's some more oh, stuff. Oh, that's about so it. nice. Thank Two, you for so. that. That's so nice. Great. Perfect. So there good. you go. You can go there. You can go check out my Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, you're, you're coming, coming, to a, coming to a convention near you. you so. Probably. I got a million things. That, yeah. I feel like I'm all over the place already this year. So, Yeah. And, and then also, I guess I'll give them a shout out to the Philadelphia Connection. That's who you're working with. Um, that's so, my agent, Lucas. Yeah. That's so, my um, exclusive agent. Yeah. Um, at the Philadelphia Connection, you can go to his Instagram page as well. You can also follow along. He's got some incredible um, other clients as well. Um, we have a really cool little family over there. And mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. You can hit him up too if you want me somewhere. Yeah, yeah, no. So if you want to, if you want Natanya at a show, go to the mm -hmm. Philadelphia Connection. You know yeah. what I mean? If if you can't get to Philadelphia, reach out to Natanya. She'll point you in the right direction of that. That's right. You yeah. know, we'll so, make it happen. Yeah, so definitely that'll be uh, great. So um, yeah. no, Natanya, this is great tonight. Yeah, this is awesome. Thank you. This is a lot of fun. Um, you know, and again, check out Natanya's um Instagram page, Natanya Ross. Check out Wrath Mercy. Check out Philadelphia Connection. There's all kinds of uh, great stuff that she's working on and these other folks are working on. So definitely go and support that. And yeah. again, Tanya, thank, thank, thank you so much for that. Keep up keep up the good work with what yeah. you're doing for, for, for people everywhere, you know? And, you know, yeah. thanks for all the, thanks for all the shows that you did. But I mean, thank you so much for, for what you're doing now. I think that, I think that speaks volumes as to- Thank you. So, um, that means a lot. Thank you so much. No, 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 pro no problem. Um, and I'll, we'll keep you backstage in a minute after we, we end off, but, yep. um, everybody watching tonight, thank you so much. Like I said, go follow Natanya and, um, we will see you next time on in credit chat. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you guys.